Hello, welcome to today's class. My name is Elena Moy. Today we are going to learn uh, fundamentals of programming language, uh, BIT 1201. So we start with the introduction where we look at the definition. So we define first what is a computer program. What is a computer program? Whereby we say that uh, a, pr a computer program is a sequence of instructions sequence of instructions, note that, written using a computer programming language to perform a specified or specific task by the computer. Uh, there are instructions that are written using a certain programming language to perform specified or given task. So from that definition, we see that there are two important terms there, sequence of instructions and computer programming language, the programming language. So to understand these terms, Let's consider a case. You are asking somebody on to give you directions, or consider a situation where somebody asks you to give you uh, uh, about, uh, to, to uh, ask you about how to get to Naiva supermarket. Let's say, for example, we have uh, uh, here Naiva supermarket. So, what exactly do you tell them how to get to Naiva? You will use a language. So depending, are you communicating whether in English, Swahili, or whichever language, you will use a language to tell them on how to get to Naivas. So it will go something like that, maybe tell them first go straight, after a half kilometer take left from the red right, and then drive around one kilometer and you will find KFC at the right, and then uh, there you go, you will just see uh, Naivas. So here you have used English language. You have used a language to give that communication, to give several steps that one should take to get to, to Naivas uh, supermarket, which we can summarize as the steps are, one, go straight, two, drive half a kilometer, take left, drive another round, uh, around one kilometer or go whether... Uh, that then search for KFC at your right side. So the above sequence of, of instructions is actually a human program. It's a human program. It's a program showing how you go about uh, getting where you're going. Written in English. You have used English, which instructs how to get to uh, reach neighbors from a given point. So this same sequence could have been given in Spanish, yeah? in Hindu, in Arabic, or other language, uh, provided the person that you're speaking to understand that language. So now going back to computer program, a computer program is a sequence of instructions written in a computer language, a sequence of instructions written in a computer language for doing specified or certain things uh, to perform the specified task uh, uh, by the computer. So we have said what is a computer program. Let's now look at computer programming. What is computer programming? It is simply the act of writing those computer programs, the act of writing those computer programs is called computer programming language. So there are very many programming languages that are available which can be used to write those computer programs. So for example, some of the popular ones, we have Java, we have C+, C, Python, PHP, PAL, Ruby, among uh, so many others. So what is uh, the uses of computer programs? Why have computer programs? So today computer programs are being used in almost every field. We actually say that currently there is nowhere, there is no field that you cannot use software, that you cannot use computers. So computer programs, and you know a computer, we know yes, the physical computer as you're seeing here, but whatever it does, it's enabled by use of programs or software. So computer programs are used in almost every field, every field, every industry, household. We use them at home, agriculture, medical, entertainment, defense, communication, etc. And there are so many ways that they are used. If there is such advancement in technology uh, every day that people, innovators, designers, programmers, they are coming up with programs to be used in all these fields. So examples, you can just look at simple or a few application areas where computer programs are used. The first one is the obvious one, Microsoft Word, Excel, those packages that you use to do your uh, office application uh, work, 
they are computer programs. They are written computer programs. You have Adobe Photoshop, if you've used that. You have Internet Explorer, which is a browser. Chrome also a browser. These are examples of computer programs. And these are what we call um, general purpose computer programs. They can be used in many areas for many applications. Um, computer programs are also used to, uh, being used to develop graphics and special effects in movie uh, making industry. We have animation, we have those programs, graphic, um, video editors, and all that. Then you have computer programs that are used to perform ultrasounds, x-rays, and other medical examinations. So this is the medical field. Uh, computer programs are used. They are softwares that have been created, designed to do those specific terms, uh, tasks as far as these fields are concerned. And that is now where the issue, we talk of the issue of hardware and and software, they have, they have to be made uh, to be specifically to interact with those environments. A, a, a program to be used by an ultrasound or an X-ray is not uh, the same program that you can use here, for example, in MKU for our daily business operations. That one will have to have its specific operations. We have computer programs that are be used, being used in our mobile phones for SMS, chat, and voice communication. There we have mobile development programmers uh, through um, mobile uh, development programming. They create programs. You know we have a, a mobile phone or this, uh, the smartphones, we use the gadget, we have the headset, the hardware, but there has to be the software or the program that, that controls that. So those are just but a few. There are so many applications of um, computer programs. These ones you have seen will be those ones that are general. Remember going to specific companies, institutions, um, uh, industries, they have their own computer programs that they run. They, we call them software. Even as we talk about information systems, information system of course will include all the others plus the software includes the hardware and the software but now those specific information system of course our computer program does not work on its own it's created by the programmer then it has to work, work in a certain environment and maybe work with other uh, softwares uh, and you know in your introduction to computers you learned about classification of software there is uh, system software there is application programs and application programs there is um, general purpose and special purpose and now that is where we have com co come to special purpose where you have companies uh, being made or uh, procuring or getting developers to develop softwares or programs for their specific business operations. Uh, next we look at an algorithm. What is an algorithm? So from the programming point of view, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure. It is a step-by-step -step procedure to resolve any problem. So it shows what should be done. What should be done? The first thing uh, after that, the next action to be done to resolve a problem. So an algorithm is an effective method expressed as a finite set of well-defined instructions. Finite because you have to go to specific activities that are happening and make sure that you define them well. You learn the unit data structures and algorithm and before you create a program you can have an algorithm. So a computer programmer lists down all the steps required to resolve a problem before writing the actual code so that you may write the right code in the right format so that the code or the program does what it's supposed to do. Then you have first to list all the steps that need to be required to solve that problem, the problem that the software will solve. So for example, we have a simple of, an, an example of an algorithm to find out the largest number from uh, given a list of, of numbers. And here maybe in uh, this is, later we'll go to something where we'll talk about control structures. So assume you get a list of numbers, we are calling it L1, L2, L3, up to Ln. Assume that L, uh, L1 is the largest. Assume uh, that L1 is the largest. We are creating an algorithm on how we'll be able to find, or you create an algorithm and finally create a program which will identify the largest number from the list. So assume that L1 is the largest, therefore we have L1 equals to largest. Then take the next number, Li, assume you have a number of lists, so any number from there we call it Li. 
from the list and do the following. So if the largest is less than Li, if the largest, which we had said is the largest, so the largest, which is L1, can be any number or from that list. So uh, if so, L, if the largest is L, uh, if the largest is um, less than Li, so we had said that L1 was the largest. So in this case, we have also chosen another number called it Li. So if the largest is less than Li, then that means currently, where we are in the algorithm number five, that largest equals to Li. If Li is last number from the list, if Li was the last number from the list, then print value stored in the largest and come out. So else repeats, same process starting from step three. So this one, you will translate this into program. If you run this program, we'll be later be writing the exact program. Right, right now we are talking about algorithm. An algorithm is not, have not been translated into the syntax and format of a program. But it gives how you will translate later this to a program. So when you create this program, it will actually give you, logically, this will give you the largest number from a list. So anytime you type a list of numbers from L1 up to LN, it will give uh, the largest number. Let's look at the history of programming language in brief. Uh, how did they come about? So programming language, the history of programming language spans from documentation of early mechanical computers to modern tools for software development. So when you learn about uh, generation of computers or hit the history of computing, you come from where we have the early computers which we say they were mechanical and then you have the modern so the programming language then in that uh, case also started with the early mechanical uh, computers so there were also programming languages that were developed for that so early programming languages were highly specialized they were highly specialized doing maybe a specific terms and relying on mathematical notation and similarly obscure syntax. Remember the early computers, we, we, when you look at the history computers, the computers that were large, big, but could perform just specific tasks. In the, in the um, history of programming language, we say that uh, Lady Ada, who we call Ada Lovelace, is one of the early uh, programmers. Actually, we say that Lady Ada is the first programmer who uh, uh, programming uh, lady. So this person produced an algorithm for the analytical engine. Remember Charles Babbage, the first computing uh, device that was considered to have all the basic components of a computer is the analytical engine that was created by Charles Babbage. Hence, we usually say that Charles Babbage is the father of computer. So Lady Ada developed an algorithm I uh, developed an algorithm for the analytical engine. So this is the first computer that was ever created. So the purpose was to help Bad Bitch with uh, Bernoulli number computations. And therefore, uh, Lovelace describes her machine set as different from previous calculating machine complexity. So this is the first, um, it's the first um, program that appeared to work like the program compared to what we have as programming language uh, today. So her contribution to the computer programming world are important because it showed the capabilities of computer devices because that's from where that's where we have had so much development up to where we are today. And then the other major development was on the assembly language appeared in 1949 and soon so a uh, wide use of electronic uh, delay storage automatic uh, computer. So the assembly language was a low level computer programming language that specified the language of machine code. The, so the assembly language is where we are coding using machine language. You will have later classification. So that is you are not using the human language but using the machine language to code. Uh, the early computer programs also came in va many variants, all of which were covered under generic term autocode. So autocode, that is the early programming around 1950. The programs that we have there were called autocode. And the first compiled programming 
language. Then we have around uh, 1957, the famous uh, uh, Fortran. Fortran is another programming language that is still famous, or that is still actually this is one of the oldest programming language that is still in use today, which is actually short for formula translation, and it's. Um, designed to do complex statistical mathematic and scientific work it is a good uh, base for programming and then you have uh, other crucial programming language uh, that appeared under that period we have algo 1958 stands for algorithmic language uh, that was designed to provide the beginning point for the development of java so from algo now we later had the C, C++, Pascal, Java. We have COBOL, is also another programming language, common business oriented uh, language made by Grace. Uh, Mura Hopper as a language that could learn on all types of brands of computer programs. So this, this one, this programming language, uh, this popular programming language is used in credit card processing, ATM, government and hospital computers. So some of these programs, they are quite old, but they are still in use for some um, uh, purposes. We have LISP 1959. This first created to help with artificial intelligence research. Even now, as you are learning artificial, artificial intelligence, you learn LISP, LISP as one of the programs to... Uh, program for artificial uh, experts. We call it uh, um, uh, putting the expertise of human beings into machines, which we call the area of artificial intelligence. And is the second oldest high level programming language and can also be used to this day in situations where Python or Ruby are used. We have basic design in 1964 which was modified by Paul Allen and Bill Gates and soon became the first product ever made by Microsoft uh, Corporation. So Apple developers, on the other hand, used Pascal during their early years uh, due to how powerful and easy to learn it was. Uh, so those are some of uh, the popular languages. We have um, Smalltalk, 1972. Uh, introduce things uh, that are now present in vital languages so more functionalities we have C the C language which we call is a structured programming language was the first ever high level programming language so note that C language is a high level programming language uh, that made it possible for Linux to be used in broad variety of different pro uh, computer programs. A C programming language has so many functionalities. This is a language where you can learn all the basics of programming. And even in this unit for demonstration, we'll be demonstrating even using C language. We have SQL, Structured Query Language, which revolutionized the database. It's a database language that allows user, I mean, programmers to add, view, or remove data items using queries. And lastly, there we have MATLAB, remains one of the, uh, the top coding languages for writing mathematical programs, and it is mostly used in research, mathematics, and education. So uh, you can read further about those programming languages depending on your interest. Let's go to the next part and look at the computer programming elements. The computer programming elements. So the computer programming element is made up of the following. You have program environment, the environment where you are coding, the syntax that we use. You'll be looking at all those data types, variables, keywords, basic operators, decision making, loops, numbers, characters, arrays, string, functions, and file input, output. So we start with the programming environment. Uh, so though the pro setting up the programming environment is not an element of programming, is not part of the programming, but it is actually the first part to be follow followed up before setting to write on a program or before you write a program. So this one simply implies um, a base on top of which we can do our programming. So in this case, that means you need to have the required software the required software uh, setup for example installing the the programming software in your pc or the editors or whichever software that you will need to work so to program uh, will be used to write programs 
also for those that you use to compile execute in case they, uh, they are different so for example if you need to browse the internet you will need to set up the following you need your computer to have a working internet connection and also you will need a web browser such as internet explorer edge chrome mozilla safari and the rest so similarly if you need to set up uh, your machine to start programming you will need a text editor you will need somewhere where you will type the codes because there are lines of codes you type using a keywords as we said you type use a programming language the example we gave of how you get to naivas so that means they are they are set of instructions you are uh, you are putting so the set of instructions you will need a type a text editor to create the computer programs you will need a compiler to compile the programs into binary format because you write in human language you are writing in english you are writing in a language that you understand you're using a b c one two three but remember we said that computer understands only binary numbers computer works only in zeros and ones so when you write them the compiler has to uh, has to compile the programs into binary format and also an interpreter to execute the program uh, uh, directly. In this case, uh, we can differentiate between, uh, we'll differentiate between a compiler and, and a translator. But let's first say what is a text editor? It's a software that is used to write computer program. Uh, for example, your Windows machine, every Windows machine must have, have a notepad which can be used to type program. So in some of those programming, you can actually type your programs in Notepad and then you will comply, uh, uh, compile them. So you can la launch it, of course, by going to Start All Programs, Accessories, Notepad, and click on that. Then you have Compiler. You write your computer program using programming language. Save it in, the, uh, in a text file called the program file. So the computer cannot understand that text file, that program that you have saved in the text format. So you need to convert this program in a binary format by following the procedure which can be followed. So when you convert, usually it should have the option for you. It can be understood by the computer. So the conversion from text into binary file is done by another software called a uh, compiler. So this process of conversion from text to format, uh, from, from text formatted program to binary format is called program a compilation now after compiling you can go and execute to see whether your code is doing what it's supposed to do does it display the information so you can have a diagram there shows the illustration of that process we are talking about you have a computer program file maybe a text notepad then it goes through compilation and you end up with a computer binary file which can go to execution interpreter uh, compilers are required in case you are going to write your program in a programming language that needs to be compiled into binary for format before execution. But there are other programming languages such as Python, PHP, Pile, among others, which do not need any compilation into the binary format. Rather, an interpreter can be used to read such programs line by line. So, so the difference actually between an interpreter and a comp uh, and and a compiler for an interpreter uh, it reads the programs lines by line, line and ex execute them directly without any further conversion so illustration of the same a diagram you have a computer program uh, then the interpreter interprets lines by line and that program can now be executed finally we look at the steps in program development the steps that you go through to develop a program. So the first one you start with designing program uh, objective. Design the object. What is the objectives of that program? What do you want that program to achieve? So all the ideas are formulated and expected output is drafted. You expect what do you want a program to do? One, two, three. Those are the objectives. So at this stage, the programmer should think in general terms, not in terms of specific uh, terms. So we come up with the program objectives. Then you design the program. The programmer decides how the program will work. How will it go about implementation? How will it achieve the objectives? What should the user interface be like? How should the program be organized? How, should, how to represent data? How will data be represented? And what methods to use during processing? 
So those are the things you, you ask, uh, you answer, and then you, you come up with those. So it may be possible to think along a certain general characteristics of the C language. These ones will be affected by the functions or features of the programming language that you're using because what you, should the user interface look like? You can only do according to whatever that programming environment provides. There is a different user interface look like. So you design <coughs> at that point. Then next is uh, write the code. It is a design implementation uh, by writing. Uh, the, the, the writing code means implementation of design by writing the C code in this time, in this case, writing the C program code. That is translating your programs into C language instructions, putting them into instructions using the syntax and format of C programming. So in this stage, the programmer uses C text editors or any other editor such as Notepad to write the codes. You can write them in Notepad, put them in C, or you can just go to the C editor, open and type your codes using your keyboard. Compilation, once you're through writing the codes, a compiler converts the source code into object code which is now understood by the computer the object code is instruction is in machine language so it translates them from the codes um, the human language to machine language so computers have different machine languages so C compiles C compilers also incorporate code for uh, C libraries into final program that is executable file that the computer can understand so Next is after writing the code, you run the program. You run the program. So this is the actual execution of the final code, usually preceded by linking. So once the, the code executor code is complete and working. So once you run the program, it is executed linking. And now you can see the output and see whether does it do what you are expecting to do. We have test involves checking whether the system does what it is was intended to do. When you see the output, uh, you can see whether there is an error, whether it is okay. If there are errors, the programs may have bugs or errors. So debugging involves uh, finding and fixing the errors. After you run, you try to see where is the error and fix and correct. Uh, we look at various types of errors. And then finally, maintain and modify the program. So occasionally changes become necessary to make uh, to a given program. Once you have created the program, when it comes to software, that is not the end of it when it comes to programs. You may think of a better way to do something in a program. You may want to modify a, a clever feature, or you may want to adapt the program to learn in a different environment, or you may find out the way it is working is not very efficient and do changes. And so that one, you maintain and modify a program, and that uh, works throughout until when maybe you go on developing uh, other programs. So that brings us to the end of this lesson class. We will meet next time for the next class. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.